You see that? You see that? That's a new flowering stalk of that plant. Oh, by the way, you, you see like that like bush up here right there? Yeah. Behind it, there's like a plant, like like dirt all over and there's like like leaves and stuff. Why? I don't know. Hmm. I saw it yesterday when you hit it on the ground. All right. <coughs> so let's talk about speed and acceleration a little bit. Um, first off, speed, our definition that we use for speed it is going to be the distance that an object travels divided by the amount of time that it took for it to travel that distance. So we have a pretty simple formula. Speed equals distance over time. S equals V over T, we abbreviate sometimes. And so if we look at some problems, as always, for our purposes, when you solve these problems, you're going to start by doing what first? How do we solve our problems? We do three steps. What do we do first? Lena? What's that? Not yet. Remember we did this when we calculated um, density, we did it when we calculated volume and so forth. Formula, speed equals distance over time. You can write S equals D over D, that's fine. Second step, after we've written the formula, substitute your numbers. In this case, a bird travels 100 kilometers in five hours. Distance is 100 kilometers. Speed is 5 hours. And what does that give us for an answer? Jake? No, Jake? 20 kilometers an hour. Yeah, 20. And again, we need to combine our units, kilometers per hour. Solve number two. 30 minutes of rockets traveling 1,400 meters. changes, but sometimes um, an object follows a constant speed, and constant speed means basically the speed is unchanged. Like if, uh, I don't know if you know this because you don't drive, but you ever notice if your parents set the cruise control in the car? You guys know what that is? Not <laughs> autopilot. It doesn't like drive you to your destination. What does it do? Mama? Is it in where you don't have to press the pedal? Yeah, you, you're going a certain speed and you press the button and it, then you can take your foot off the gas and it's going to hold you at that speed um, until you press on the brakes or turn off the cruise control. So it keeps you at a constant speed. 
All right, well, so velocity is a term you probably have heard. But velocity is slightly different than speed, and it's just a, a more technical definition. Velocity is the speed an object's traveling, but it also includes a direction with it. So technically, velocity should include a direction. So we might say a train's velocity is 130 kilometers per hour south. So that includes a direction, so that is a proper velocity. The other thing is that velocity changes if speed changes or also if the direction changes. Okay, if this train turns um, you know, 90 degrees to the right, then I would say its velocity has changed. It would now be traveling 130 kilometers per hour west. So a boat going due south at 50 kilometers per hour changes course and heads east, but it doesn't change speed. Has its velocity changed? Yes, it has, because it's going in a different direction. velocity, we sometimes have to combine velocities. Has anybody been on, um, you know, like at an air, a big airport sometimes has a mechanical walkway, sometimes called catwalk, where it's just moving, oh, yeah. like a moving sidewalk sometimes called. Anyone ever been on those? Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's moving, right? The, the, I don't even know what you call it. The track is moving a certain velocity carry you from one part of the airport to another. What happens if you also are walking on that as well? Have you ever done that? Yeah. And how do you appear to move? You go faster. You're much faster. Or if you were to walk opposite, it would be slower. Um, so to find your actual velocity of how quickly you're actually moving, you have to combine the velocity of the track that's pushing you forward also with the velocity of you walking forward. Or if you ever walked up an escalator. Again, the escalator is taking you up to the next level at a certain velocity. But if you're also walking up, you combine the two velocities to see what your actual velocity is. Um, so, for example, if we have a man on a train, the train's traveling 200 kilometers due west, and he's also walking forward on the train 5 kilometers per hour, what is the man's total velocity? What? 205 kilometers. One kilometers one way, plus he's walking five kilometers means he's actually moving relative to the outside 205 kilometers per hour. How about after he uses the bathroom, whatever he did, he's walked back to his seat. As he's walking back to his seat, what would his velocity be? Gage? Um, 195. Yeah, 100. 95 kilometers per hour. So we have to combine those two velocities. Anyone ever walk backwards up the escalator? Whatever. I walk backwards up the escalator. Yeah, and so you're, you have to, if you walk at the exact same velocity that the elevator is moving, what's your velocity? Zero. Zero. And you sort of stay at the same place on that escalator. Kind of like a treadmill. Escalator. Treadmill works by you match the velocity of the track that's spinning, and therefore you don't actually move. All right, so that's speed and velocity. We need to also add in acceleration. And so acceleration is a change in velocity, a change in speed. And it's based on how quickly that change happens. So can I even guess what the formula is? How do you find acceleration? What? Uh, you divide the time by the time. Uh, you said like one word at a time, or <laughs> you divide the time by the time. Not quite. You divide the time by the time. Not quite. Anyone 
anyone else want to give it a try on the map? And that's that? Divide it by how long? Yeah, you're pretty close. That's not what you said. You said you divide time by how long. Oh, exactly. You said divide time by the speed. No, you divide the change in speed, okay? Divided by the change in time. So the formula we use acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by. We abbreviate it often. VF minus VI over T. Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So if a rocket goes from 0 to 20 kilometers per second, and it takes 10 seconds, what's its acceleration? Well, Again, we're going to use the formula. Acceleration equals VF minus VI over T. So what's its final velocity of the rocket? Gage? 20 kilometers. Not quite, but very close. 20 kilometers, is that a velocity? That's a distance. What's its velocity, Ian? 20 kilometers per second. What's its initial velocity? Zero. Ian? Zero kilometers per second. How much time did it take for that change to happen? Okay? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. So we have our numbers. Vf minus Vi is 20. 20 minus 0 is 20 kilometers per second. Divided by 10 seconds. Gives us an answer of what? 20. Somebody else besides gauge meter. What was his hand? Isn't it? See him? What's that? Two units here. So the units for acceleration require you to look a little bit and think a little bit. What should, so remember, whatever we do to the numbers, we do to the units. So what would the units be? The map? Two kilometers. That's a distance, right? Two kilometers? Yeah. That's not an acceleration. And if you think about what this means, it might make sense. OS? That's a speed. No? Am I? Two kilometers per second squared. Yes. So we could say it two ways. Two kilometers per second per second, or two kilometers per second squared. Why do you have to say it twice? Now, because think about what this really means. So when we look at this acceleration number, what this is telling us, every second, this rocket is increasing in speed two kilometers per second, right? So each second that goes by, its speed's increasing two kilometers per second. So that's why it's like that. And we can write this as two kilometers per second squared. Okay, person. On a motorcycle, accelerates from 7 kilometers per hour to 37 kilometers per hour for over the period of two minutes. What was her acceleration? Again, follow the steps. Write it all out. All right, what do I do first, Jason? Formula. What happened here? I guess my numbers aren't showing up. Um, yeah, formula, which is acceleration was VF minus VI over T. Substitute our numbers. What do you get for an answer, Jason? 15 kilometers per second squared. Not quite. You said one thing wrong with that. Because that would be very fast for a motorcycle. Yes. No. Well, all right.
sorry, what, what, what's your answer? Not quite. Jake? 15 kilometers per hour squared. Nope. Ian? 15 kilometers per minute squared. Nope. I figured out the trick. There's no trick. Lena? There's a trick. 15 kilometers per hour squared. No? You got it? No. Anybody? Oh, I said, wait, 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 wait. Colin? Abby? Did you have an hour? An answer? Okay. okay. No. It's converted to minutes. No, it's converted to anything. No conversion necessary. What is the answer? Jason, what's your answer? 15 kilometers per minute. Nope. Square. So, Moaz? No. <laughs> 30. All right, so what is this? 30 kilometers per hour per hour? No, because it's going to take two hours per minute. Kilometers per hour per minute. Mama? What is it? I just told you. <laughs> Okay, what was it? 30 kilometers per hour per minute. I mean, 15 kilometers per hour per minute. Because think about what it means. Every minute, their speed is increasing seven, I mean, 15 kilometers per hour. So kilometers per hour per minute. Acceleration can be negative if an object is decreasing in speed. Sometimes we call that deceleration. Anyway, uh, so we also often use graphs to illustrate how <laughs> objects are moving. Okay, and so there's two types of graphs we may use: a velocity versus time graph, or speed versus time graph. I mean, uh, speed versus time, or distance versus time. So this graph above shows a boat traveling over a 16-minute period. We have velocity on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. So we have the line goes up, flattens out, down, and flattens out. All right. So what does the slope of the line mean when we look at this type of graph? Catherine? Yeah, there's a change in velocity, which we call what? What do we call a change in velocity? Yeah, acceleration. So what's happening? It's accelerating. Its velocity is going from 0 to 8, 8 meters per second. What does this plateau represent? Jason? Yeah, constant speed. Staying at 8 kilometers per hour for a while. What about the down part of the line, Ian? Deceleration, Deceleration constant speed. So the steeper the slope of the line, what does that mean? Steeper the slope, how was? The faster it's going. The greater the acceleration. Not the faster it's going, the greater the acceleration. some questions here. What was the boat's speed between minutes 2 and 10? I need some new hands here. I keep seeing the same people. I guess I should just come. Layla? Eight what? Meters. 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 Yep. 
8 meters per second. Was the speed constant during this time? Ellie? Uh, yeah. How do you know? Because it's, um, it's a straight line. Yeah, the line is flat. Okay, calculate the boat's acceleration between minutes 0 through 8. What's the formula for acceleration? Mia? Yep, final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Okay. Final velocity is 8 meters per second. Initial velocity was 0 meters per second. And it took eight minutes for that to happen. That's the time. So acceleration was one meters per second per minute. What was the boat's velocity at eight minutes, Lucy? What does a steeper slope mean? The steeper the slope, how? The farther the distance. Yeah, which means what about its speed? Greater speed. Yeah, greater speed. The steeper the slope, the faster the speed. So if you look at the graph on the bottom, what's happening? What is this graph showing? What's going on? What does that mean in real life? Changing how? Yeah, the speed is increasing. This is showing something exciting because the graph is increasing in steepness. It's covering a greater distance over a shorter time as that graph as you get farther along in time. What's this graph showing? Okay. Um, the greater the distance. What's that? The farther the distance. Mm, not quite. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, this is 
showing an object slowing down, decelerating, because the line is going from steep to less steep. The object's slowing down. So go ahead and finish this last one. This is a draw a graph that shows a biker accelerating from a red light until they reach a constant speed. Wait, like they get to a red light, or like once the red light turns green? They start at a red light. Starting at a red light. So what's this? And when they're at a red light, what does my graph look like? Flat line. Zero. Flat line. Where? Zero. Then they accelerate. What does my line look like? Is this correct? No. Why not? Ellie? Yes, because this is showing a constant speed. Okay, so it's accelerating. It's getting steeper and steeper. What does it look like when it reaches a constant speed? What happens? Jason? Yeah, I guess it can't go straight up. It's got to be straight. What does this mean? Straight line. No. No. Their speed is what? Faster. It's infinite. But things can't reach an infinite speed. Because what happens to their mass? It becomes too great. So what Einstein's theory of relativity says. Energy equals mass times the speed of light. Yes. Why? What are you guys playing? Wow.